What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V. And sometimes you have to bring everything back down to zero. With so many anti intermittent fasting groups, even the rise of so many pro intermittent fasting groups, unfortunately, the science that is at the center of everything sometimes gets skewed on both sides. So what I'm going to do in this video is explain the basic element that brings with it the benefit of intermittent fasting when it comes to fat burning. Now I'm going to go ahead and break that down in this video. not going to bog you down with my jump rope just $16.50 if you want it for yourself click on the top right hand corner of this video or down in the description box below it's actually an awesome speed rope with a swivel design and it's only $16.50 you get yourself a good jump rope and support this channel at the same time and of course as always guys thank you for the support now let's go ahead and jump right into the video all right so this doesn't just happen with intermittent fasting this happens with so many different diets and weight loss systems there's always the one upmanship that happens in social media that the core elements that are based on the actual scientific evidence that we have start to get either distorted diluted or just lost in the shuffle and i'm noticing that i'm noticing that i'm having to explain more about what intermittent fasting does and why it separates itself from just counting calories now i always have to start this conversation with the premise that calories matter i'm never comparing intermittent fasting versus calorie restriction i'm always comparing intermittent fasting versus only calorie restrictions because intermittent fasting in and of itself has its own innate benefits that do not that do not carry over by simply reducing your caloric intake. Now we're going to talk about the body fat burning because that is what the, because that is the core of this video. But I do want to let you know that there are other elements that come with intermittent fasting. Multiple studies have been done to show that intermittent fasting has innate health benefits that are not connected to simply reducing your calories and if you're asking yourself well maybe when they did those studies it's simply because when they lose weight they're seeing all of these benefits because simply a reduction in adipose tissue has shown an increase in health markers that is true but with the multiple variety of studies that we've had they've controlled for that specific scenario multiple times what they do is they tell the participants to eat at maintenance level both on just maintenance level without intermittent fasting and maintenance level with intermittent fasting and still see health benefits increase with the intermittent fasting group versus just the maintenance calorie group and then at the end of the study none of the groups lose any significant amount of weight but there is a significant increase in health markers like reduction in oxidative stress, improved blood glucose, improved insulin sensitivity, as well as other health benefits that come from intermittent fasting. So even if you didn't care about the body fat burning part, even if that wasn't a thing and you felt that you just want to reduce calories, there are still things health wise that you could be leaving on the table if you neglect to even try to do intermittent fasting now of course whatever works for you is best because reducing adipose tissue is an important part to your health and if intermittent fasting is just something you cannot do then it's just something you cannot do but it doesn't remove the fact that there are innate benefits to intermittent fasting now we move on to the body fat burning aspect of intermittent fasting. Now, this is the most highly contested part of the conversation. What's the point of intermittent fasting if all I need to do is reduce calories? Or intermittent fasting doesn't work. Calorie restriction works. Or all you're doing with intermittent fasting is reducing calories in a more roundabout way. Now, first of all, Yes, intermittent fasting makes it easier for you to reduce your calories. If you're someone who doesn't want to track, there's no better system than intermittent fasting. Because if you're not tracking what you're eating, whatever you eat will be the calories that you consume for the day. 
But if you're doing intermittent fasting and forcing yourself not to snack outside of your eating window, you increase your chances of not overeating and possibly eating below your calorie maintenance, which allows you to burn more body fat and just burn more calories throughout the day and over the course of a week, month, etc. So when people say, oh, intermittent fasting isn't anything special, it just helps you eat lower calories. That's actually a beneficial strategy to intermittent fasting. Don't dismiss that as nothing special when just creating that system is the same thing as counting calories. When you count calories, you are creating a mental system before you consume the food to protect yourself from overeating. Same thing with people who don't want to count calories and find it easier with intermittent fasting to restrict calories because they just don't snack throughout the day. So if you're belittling that strategy in terms of calorie control, then you should also belittle the calorie control strategy in and of itself. Those are both non-internal, non-biological, uh, just mental strategies to help you restrict calories. So just on that base alone, you should leave the person to do the strategy that they feel is most comfortable. But now we move on to what makes intermittent fasting different and what gives it an edge over simply doing calorie restriction. The thing with intermittent fasting that gives it an edge is the thing that I've said hundreds of times, the metabolic switchover. We've seen this with the mechanistic data, but we've also seen this in meta-analysis where the results show that there is an increase in body fat burning in the intermittent fasting group. The most controlled meta-analysis that we've ever had so far on this subject where they looked through thousands of studies and only inserted those studies in the entire meta-analysis and had a control group to pit up against intermittent fasting. And what they found was that fat burning was significantly higher in the intermittent fasting group. So a meta-analysis, guys, is a study of multiple studies. It's a, it's a way to synthesize the data and it gives you a broader picture of what might be because you never know with individual studies you know some studies can say one thing some studies can say another but when you put all of these studies together what's the actual data tell you and the meta-analysis is in line with what happens when you hit that metabolic switch over now why does your body burn more fat with intermittent fasting than simply calorie restriction now Please understand that anecdotal evidence is not what we're looking at here. It's not what happened to you versus what's happening with your cousin. Because certain people have different experiences. They can tell you how much they're eating, but probably be eating less without even remembering how much they're eating. These are controlled studies that are looking at what happens when you do intermittent fasting and restrict calories, isocaloric with all the macronutrients being the same, and what happens when you just restrict calories, isocaloric with all the macronutrients being the same. Now, because of the fact that you are in a post-absorptive range, then hitting that metabolic switchover, your body no longer has enough glucose to provide energy towards your brain and your bodily functions. So your brain is smart and flexible. What it does is it works off of body fat. It instead moves the fatty acids into the liver and turns them into ketone bodies. And your brain can work off of this for about 75% of its energy so which means that eventually you need to start eating because your brain will need to have that food come in so it isn't recommended that you do extremely long extended fasts but anything up to 48 hours where the majority of the studies lie should be okay anything past that there are very limited studies it's best that you stay within the range of the studies especially if you haven't gone that far yet so because your body requires uh, ketones which comes from your fatty acids which comes from stored body fat because your body is doing this you are now partitioning the calorie burn 
where you're focusing it more on body fat than any other source in your body because you're doubling everything up. Your body's using it for ketone and you're also at a caloric deficit. If you're not at a caloric deficit, what's going to end up happening is that you're just going, you're going to be doing that burning process, but you're also going to be doing the storing process because at the end of the day, you were at a net positive energy balance. So even though there was some burning, there was some fueling, and there was some burning, and there was even more fueling, and there was some burning, but you fueled more than you burned. So therefore you've gained fat at the end of the day. So you, you have to keep that in mind. You can't hack it to the point where because you're burning fat, uh, you don't have to worry about the calories. You do, but intermittent fasting creates a system where it makes it easier for you to have restricted calories. Now, if you ever hit a wall, this would be the time where you would have to start focusing on your calories because that wall isn't coming down because you probably reach your limit on not paying attention and being able to eat. I hope that makes sense for you. So that's it. That is the basic level zero information on intermittent fasting. I simply needed to make this video because over the four or five years that I've been doing this uh, for you guys, I've noticed some distortion happening simply from people who are against intermittent fasting or people who are for intermittent fasting, but just wants to try to stand out and one up the information that's already out there. We can't get ahead of ourselves, guys. We have to be able to have the studies confirm all of the hypotheses that we've had. What I've told you is what we know based on the studies that we currently have. So hopefully this was very informative for you and just clears the air. And of course, as always, I want to thank my patrons from my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here.